Houston, Texas. Extracting the signal from the noise, it's the Cube. Covering Grace Hopper Celebration of Women in Computing. Now your hosts, John Furrier and Jeff Frick. Hello everyone and welcome to Silicon Angles, the Cube, our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon Angles. I'm my co-host, Jeff Frick, general manager of our Cube. We are live in Houston, Texas for the Grace Hopper 2015 Celebration of Women in Computing, uh, an amazing event. Really, this is ground zero, the epicenter of innovation around women in, in technology, women in science, STEM, everything else. And I got to tell you, it is the most incredible scene here. We'll be here for three days wall-to-wall -wall coverage, two full days, kind of a end of the day here in Houston, Texas. I'm here with Jeff. Jeff, you were here last year, did a flyby. We did an on the ground. We weren't live, we didn't have the big stage like we had this year. But last year was the Satya Nutella comment, but who, as is breaking news, he's not showing up here. Yeah, I heard that. I thought he was coming back with Maria Clave again to kind of readdress. Uh, he kind of put his foot in his mouth and he apologized for it. And, and uh, as I think in our, our interview with Maria after that, she said it's, it's good news because it really brought the, uh, the issue to the table. But, but we're really excited, John, to be back in full force. We got theCUBE here for three days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage. It's really like no event I've ever been at. We can, we'll cover about 70 events at theCUBE this year, and I've never seen one with quite the energy, quite the range of, of ages. You've got a lot of college students, and you've got a lot of more seasoned citizens, as we like to say, as you and I joined that class. It's a huge breadth. And, and the range of, of representatives here in the Expo Hall, everything from Citibank, Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan on the finance side, all the tech names you would expect to see, like Google and Microsoft, Avanade has a giant booth um, into it. Cisco, LinkedIn, Sync, Twitter. But then you've got a bunch of government. I saw the NSD has a space over there, so there's a ton of government representation, and then you have the academic side as well. Every university under the sun who has anything going on is here, and it's really all about, as we talked to Elizabeth Ames last year at the Anita Borg uh, Women of Vision Awards, this is not about women getting marketing jobs at tech companies. It's not about women getting PR jobs, or HR jobs, or, uh, any of those types of jobs. It's about engineering. This is an engineering show, and, and from the recruiting point of view, I don't know that there's any show where you've got this many qualified candidates that, that, that people can look out at. Yeah, Jeff, it's impressive. The range of companies is really impressive. Goldman Sachs to government and everything in between. We're now at the big stage here, at the ground, right on the ground floor of the Grace Hopper, big stage. Next to us is an exhi um, exhibition that points out, it says, Post your most proud moments, and it's a wall where people are posting their achievements. This is about women leadership. This is about women empowerment. This is, a, to me, someone my age in the computer industry over the past few generations, a historic moment because the tide has shifted completely down to a new generation where there are a lot of ladies, women, girls in tech. STEM is huge and it's not a male-driven culture anymore. Certainly there's some male dominance that's a hangover from previous generations, but you're seeing conversations where it's inclusive. It's a male, inclu they're including the males of the conversation, women are taking leadership roles. So to me, it is a super exciting, as a father called DOD, dads of daughters, <laughs> um, we both have daughters, we could, we could uh, you know, be proud to say the DODs out there, dads of daughters, will know that the opportunities for our girls and for women in the business are tremendous. More importantly, there are a lot of mentors, Jeff, out there who are mentoring um, the, the young ladies coming up through the ranks. So it's certainly an empowerment time. It's very cultural, community driven, um, and it's super exciting. What's your take? You were here last year for the big Satya thing. You were here for the last year's celebration. What's your take? I mean, my observation is very clear. There's women everywhere, and the men's line to the bathroom is <laughs> like, there's no line. <laughs> the ladies' line is long. Um, well, you know, John, just the, the energy, like I said, is amazing. Uh, just a couple of observations. You know, people getting their goodie bag. Again, we go to a lot of conferences, you get your goodie bag, it's usually filled with a bunch of stuff, you don't spend a lot of attention. People were sitting down going through it because there was a lot of good stuff in there. <laughs> I mean, people really care. The excitement and the enthusiasm is, is pretty phenomenal. But I think, too, John, we're in the middle of our fall tour. We were just at AWS. We've got a bunch of shows coming up, and, and we, we talk a lot about that every company today is really a software company. It's just wrapped around whatever product and service that they may or may not be selling. And as I look out again, GE is here, Target is here, Best Buy is here, you know, a lot of Macy's is here. 
But it just goes to show that those kind of big line retailers that you don't really think of as technology companies, they're really technology companies. And, and it really supports what we see over and over and over, that software's eating the world, everybody's a technology company, it's just what is your, um, what is your product or service well, that you wrap it around? I got to say, Jeff, I love women in tech. I think I always have, I mean, I love the fact that you know, there's a gender difference between male and, male and female that's been out there, for, as we all know, from high school, growing up through, through adult life. But women bring a, a perspective to technology that's exciting, right? And then it's like when you went to school and all the girls you hung out with school, from classes that were super smart, they're now having the same opportunities. And I think, to me, that's why I love women in tech, not only for the future of my daughters being a dad of a daughter, DOD, but really is that it brings a diversity. Things get done better that way. I think you're going to see a tsunami of, of, of leadership, and Grace Hopper is only one element. There's an event coming up in Stanford that we're going to try to go to, data science in Stanford, and that's going to be a fantastic event. And again, some serious data scientists out there, great stuff. So Jeff, to me, my observation is it's a sea of women, everybody's super excited. When they open up the hall doors here, to the exhibit hall, a cheer. Yeah. People were <laughs> cheering. Yeah. yeah it, when was the last tech conference we went to with a cheer, except yeah. for an Apple show or maybe VMworld? Right. Uh, but no one cheers, come on. And, and, and Apple's here, they've got a big presence. It looks like an Apple store. They have nothing in their booth but really pretty tables. I assume they're getting the iPads out. And, and you know, and I look out behind us, John, I see poster sessions, a very academic way of people presenting yeah. their, their studies and their reports. So it's really a great, a great kind of blending of this academic, the government, the business, the technology, a recruiting event. And the other thing that, that you know, that's going to come up a lot, and, and we talked to um, Lori McKenzie, the executive director of the Clayman Institute at Stanford, at the VM Women event at VMware, and they talked about bias. The fact of the matter is we all have bias, we bring bias, and that's okay. We've all had life experiences that we bring to, to everything that we face. Where it becomes problematic is if you're not aware of your bias and you let your bias get in the way. But even in a great conversation that we had um, with Kim uh, Stevenson at Intel, when you bring a diversity of opinions to a problem, people look at it different ways. You're going to arrive at a better solution because you simply don't look at the problem the same way somebody else does based on their experience. So again, I think this is a really great event. I think it's very empowering. I think all the companies out of here are yeah. obviously excited. And we've got a full day of three days of wall-to-wall yeah. -wall coverage. And, and I think the thing that you mentioned is the biases are natural out there. And there are biases, but the biases also bring diversity. If people are open to the biases, that was inter interesting. Had a great Facebook thread on my Facebook as I was flying out here yesterday. I put the question out to my Facebook friends um, in Silicon Valley and I said, real questions, is it not politically correct to say I love women in tech? And so I put that out there and, and there's a lot of different comments. Comments do I call, is it better to call someone a woman in tech or lady in tech? Some said lady was worse, some said women was better. If you're in the South, people like lady, they thought ladies were better. So all kinds of different biases, even from women and men, so I found that interesting. However, Jeff, the one thing that I'm looking for in this event, in addition to the technology, was one comment that came on my Facebook page, and that was, oh, it's all great with women in tech, rah, rah, okay, it's rah, rah, good stuff. But the real question is, who's investing in women? And so what I'm going to be looking for at this event is the kinds of entrepreneurs that are out there. And I think that is still a spot that I have not seen Silicon Valley truly embrace in terms of really giving women an equal opportunity. The male-dominant venture capital world is still um, rampant, and, I, and there's now Karitsu's being developed, Eileen Lee and a bunch of others um, are doing their own thing. But still, if you're a woman entrepreneur, I still think there's a lot of big problems there that need to be eliminated. I think there's way more capital for entrepreneurs, and I'm going to be looking for that here today. So yeah. if you're an entrepreneur and you're watching, ping me uh, at Furrier on Twitter, or uh, comment if you're here watching. i uh, love to talk with you. So. Yeah, and on the big company side, you know, at the at the uh, the Women of Vision Awards uh, that we attended earlier this year, BNY Mellon won the Company of Vision, and really Elizabeth Ames from the Borg Institute talked about a survey that they put out, and people filled out the survey and how well they're doing, and in fact, GoDaddy, who we're going to have on uh, later today, re released the the results of their own internal process, and really what's important about this is that people document it and start to write it down and see where they are. So even if they're not doing really really well at least get a baseline, have something to start to work against. And I know GoDaddy made um, a, a big announcement earlier today, we're going to get August Goldman on later to talk about that, 
And, and even as, as Elizabeth, Elizabeth Ames said, even though BNY Mellon won the award, for the other companies to take the time and effort to fill it out, get a survey, get a benchmark, get a baseline, then they can start working against it. So I think things you know, continue to move in the right Jeff, direction. Jeff, what is your observation? What are you seeing? I mean, you were here last year. Um, again, it's day one, looking out on the floor here, looking at the sessions. Again, a lot of research, a lot of science, a lot of academic, but as you said, a lot of different verticals here. Just general anecdotal observation. You know, I thought it was interesting on Megan Smith just now, just finished up the, the afternoon keynote, and, and she made an interesting comment. She said, we really have two missions. We should go to places where there's more of us, like here, and talking to some people in the hallways this afternoon, it's really about community and, and feeling comfort and getting to a place where you're with like-minded individuals. And then she said, our other task is going to places where we're not. And you know, she's a person who left a private sector to go to government. She's a CTO of the U.S. government. Uh, you know, we talked to Michelle Lee, who left the Bay Area and Silicon Valley to go back and be the Undersecretary of, uh, of Commerce at the U.S. Patent and Trade Office. So, you know, I, I, think, I think it's an interesting contrast. You want to be with like-minded people so you feel the support, you feel, what's, you feel good about what's going on. You're not there by yourself and you're the only woman in a CS class of 30, but at the same time really in, 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 in bolding them to go out and make a difference yeah, and, 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 and ask thing, those questions. Thing, there's not a lot of guys here, so I mean like we're, you know, kind of sticking out like a sore thumb, but I think having these kind of events with women is great, but also including the male conversation is really important as well. I find that to be really critical, and I think that's to your point about going places. Yeah. And again, we're going to be talking to people, we're going to be listening, we're going to be having a conversation. Join us on crowdchat.net slash GHC15, and we will uh, be getting all the chats there. That's our crowd engagement conversation. We'd love to hear from you. Um, on Twitter, obviously, the Twitter sphere is booming. Um, check us out on Twitter. Still more to come from the Grace Hopper Women in Celebration, Women in Computing Celebration here, and it truly is a celebration. Uh, smartest women in the world are here. Um, in Anita Borg Institute. We had Hillary Mason going to be joining us. She did the keynote. We're trying to get Cheryl Sandberg to come on. Um, where it is, so she's got a very tight schedule. Um, and again, Satya Nutella will not be here this year. He was allegedly scheduled to be here, backed out in the last minute, got cold feet. Well, I, we'll go to I Seattle. can't blame him. We'll go to Seattle talk to Satya. I can't, Anytime you want us to come to Seattle. I can't, I can't blame him because I think he's better off, as he said, to listening and watching. I think if he engages too fast, it might be counterproductive. What's your thoughts on that? Uh, I don't know. I, I think he should have came. I think, you know, Maria is a fellow board member. I think that she did a great job with it last year. Hey, he, he made a mistake. He has a bias. He didn't necessarily recognize it. It was yeah. brought to light, and uh, as, as Maria said, it was uncomfortable. It was uh, awkward, but it, it turned out to be a great thing because it elevated the conversation. Go back and look at the news for about a month after that after that interview. That was the hot topic. So, I you think know, he sometimes got, I growth think, is uncomfortable. I think, I think he got slammed and skewered for the comment, but generally I've been looking into this all year, and I don't see Satya Nutella as the kind of person who isn't for the same celebration of women in computing. He has put out very transparently the numbers. He's gone above and beyond to go, really, really he just kind of <laughs> stepped on himself in <laughs> the comment, not knowing the impact. Right, and right. you know, once the grenade goes off, the shrapnel is embedded. Right, so right. as far as I'm concerned, he took one for the team. But generally, I don't think Microsoft and Satya Nutella are really driving against the trend that we're seeing, which is more women, more leadership, more autonomy, more science, and entrepreneurship, that is going to be the focus. This is theCUBE, you're watching live in Houston, Texas from the Anita Borg, Women in Celebration, Grace Hopper Event 2015. We'll be right back.